righty. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start. <coughs> yeah. Good evening. Um, welcome to the planning. Welcome to the planning board meeting of January thirteenth. Um, we are going to. We have a very administrative agenda. No public hearings tonight. Um, I would like to um, take the growth study committee um, comments and proposal first because members met ahead of time. Um, we'll get that one done and then move on to the Zach articles. Just go ahead, or yeah, okay. just go ahead. Comparing the vice chair democracy. Perfect. Is it on? It is. It should be on. It should be on. Yeah. I don't want to lift it up. Um, we've had dead. <laughs> Sorry. We've had two public hearings, uh, or public workshops really, in November and one just last week at the Senior Center. And then one of the topics we've been working on is timely uh, because it's a budget issue and we wanted to bring it before the planning board tonight to kind of get your feedback and then we thought we might, either we or the planning board might want to mention it to the select board depending on what you think about it. And I apologize that we don't have a clean copy for you tonight. We were still going through edits until we met earlier tonight, but we can send you a clean copy. Later, but I'm going to let uh, Finn introduce the it's the proposal for an economic development officer for a town, and a lot of towns have these already and have had good success bringing new businesses, doing outreach to businesses and residents. And we thought it, we've got a lot of good feedback at both of our workshops that people would like to see something like this in town, but it's not free. You'd have to hire a person, and so we need to go to the select board. So. Thanks very much, Amy. Um, this is a proposal that. Uh, in fairness, comes uh, with the greatest impact from the uh, Hopkins and Chamber of Commerce. And so I, uh, Chuck Joseph and myself are the Chamber of Commerce representatives for the, uh, on the Growth Study Committee. And so uh, early in October, as we were kind of working on topics uh, for the committee to discuss and things that we needed to look at, this became one of those issues, and a memorandum was circulated in October amongst the committee members, and there was general sense that this was something that made some sense to put forward in the, uh, for the town meeting. So it's been uh, hashed about, and most recently, uh, uh, it was we realized that if we were going to have an article for the town meeting, we had a deadline coming up the 1st of February. So how do we do that? Uh, and so that generated this, uh, the memorandum we discussed in October and all more or less agreed on had to be rehashed and Muriel uh, did a terrific job uh, just over the weekend getting that shaped up and uh, so that's why you see a bunch of red lining on it. I don't think you see anything at all yet, but you will. Yeah, <laughs> so the point is that uh, Hopkinton has a very robust uh, commercial and industrial community in many ways of thinking that EMC has been a tremendous citizen over the years. Perkin Elmer is here. Liberty Mutual is just leaving. But uh, it's always been uh, my sense that uh, we haven't done what we could do to really develop a relationship and further the uh, success, if you will, of, of our commercial residents. We sort of seem to assume that they pay taxes and that subsidizes all the good things that we have in town. Excuse me uh, one second, Finn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we don't want to confuse anybody. Thank you. Well, I hope you're off camera when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, and there have been various efforts over the years to uh, develop a, a more strong, a stronger uh, economic development presence in the community. Uh, the most recent official uh, effort in that regard was in 2011, when a memorandum of understanding was signed between the Board of Selectmen at that point, called the Board of Selectmen, and the Chamber of Commerce, where the Chamber of Commerce would become the economic development office for the community. And that's been 
an effort that's gone sort of up and down depending on who's been chairman of that committee and uh, what sort of success we've had. I was the chair in 2011 of the Economic Development Committee of the uh, Chamber of Commerce and we spent a great deal of time sort of just lamenting that we weren't being more successful in that regard. Uh, and at some point I uh, dropped away from that and uh, the committee was kind of moribund for a while because we're all volunteers. And then last year, uh, Nick Slotchy, uh, who has a real estate business in town, uh, became the chair and we've got some new vigor in that regard. But it's still a volunteer kind of an effort and it's not been something that's been as uh, successful as it might be. Um, so there's a, a whole raft of things that an economic development office, and I say office, not just a single staffer, because the job would be huge if you did all the things that one could do. There are things like developing a liaison with our corporate uh, citizens. Uh, right now, I think we spend an awful lot of time doing almost anything else besides talking to the leadership at EMC or Perkin Elmer or some of the other larger companies. Uh, we could become much more involved with the 495 partnership, which is a public-private partnership that's concerned with business development along 495. We could uh, assist in the permitting process that uh, when a company comes to town, how do you get through the sort of myriad boards that you need to see before you are able to get a permit to do something. Um, uh, being active in the, in the staff, I'm losing my track of all my great reasons. <laughs> yeah, developing a marketing strategy with public input, uh, maintaining a database of all commercial and industrial <laughs> properties in town. So if somebody was looking in town, this person would know what was owned what and what was open and you know where would be a good place for this business to go. Um, yeah, develop relationships with realtors. Um, let's see, attend local regional business meetings. Let's see, regional RH. I think you've covered most of this. Yeah. Yeah, be aware of public policy um, both at the local and state level. What can be, what, what's coming up, what changes might be coming. Yeah, li liaison with town officials um, and Zach and land use and bring new ideas, innovation. It's interesting, actually, Ashland has an economic development officer uh, just recently, and they don't have anywhere near the location kind of things that we do. So it's, uh, it's interesting that they've been more proactive, if that's a word, in trying to develop that. Uh, one of the things they've been particularly successful at is developing a database of available properties so that there's a lot of back and forth and one hand washing the other in the, between the commercial real estate industry and the town. And that tends to make properties move more quickly, uh, that sort of thing. We, we've heard anecdotally that Ashland, I, I think, I believe has had six new restaurants in the last year since they hired an economic development officer and, and the YMCA is going to be moving. Uh, or the big full-service YMCA is going to be coming to Ashland, I believe, right? Did, uh, and I apologize, I missed the last couple of meetings for the Growth Study Committee. Did we get a copy of any of the, um, the other towns' job descriptions? <coughs> I just need to compare, right, um, and I see how they shape that, how they define the job? For their no, that's tent. a good question. Uh, Michelle did some research on that and created a spreadsheet that shows the other towns that have them. Yeah. Uh, and it is interesting. Uh, they're not. I had thought that town, most towns had them and that they were dedicated to economic development, but they really are not. Some of them are in the planning department, and it's a side job that the town planner does. Some are in the um, in the uh, town manager's office, and it's a side job that they do. And, and in others, it's just the administrative staff in those offices, and basically all they're really doing is keeping track of things. So in some respects, if we really did a robust economic development office in Hopkinton, we would be uh, on the cutting edge, so to speak, of what suburban towns are doing. And I think that it's not so much that, that the Chamber and the Growth Study Committee feels that we need to have an economic development office for its own sake, but the fact is that, uh, well, for example, when I was uh, chairman of the Board of Assessors in the mid-80s, we were uh, 
25 percent of our tax revenue came from the commercial industrial sector. Now it's less than 15 percent, I think. I think it's 16. It's 16. 16. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's less, and uh, uh, and because we're a, a residential community and will always be such, uh, it's important that we try to keep as much of a balance as we can between commercial and residential. Um, it's, it, the reality is that residential uh, commercial tax revenue does subsidize the town budget and help us keep some control over our residential taxes. But in addition, it provides uh, really thousands of jobs at this point, uh, and they're high paying jobs, and it, it does lead to the kind of ancillary services that serve those jobs, restaurants and dry cleaners and other kinds of services, and it sort of floats all boats, I guess. Is that. Yeah, and, and new growth dollars we know are attractive, and it would be new growth dollars in the commercial industrial um, business sector versus new growth dollars necessarily in such all weighted so heavily in residential growth, which I think is an attractive balance to, to contemplate. Do you mind if we go around the table quickly? Do you have some, yeah. Okay, so I was wondering, besides getting a job description, uh, which would be useful. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Too much editing. The it list. might be useful to have uh, it broken up from part-time position to full-time position and what that cost difference would be and also what uh, John uh, input would be into this and how that would fit into his department whether it be ancillary or would it be separate in your opinion and I suppose it would depend on all the other things I think it comes down simply to how would you measure this this potential jobs measure success like if there's no metrics or there's no way to measure the successfulness then there's no there's no benefit so unless there's some way with concrete metrics you can we can say this is the benefit of having this person in this position then i would not be a proponent so i'd want to see uh how we measure this for effectiveness and success dave did you have a question i'm all set right. uh, i want to thank you guys for doing this and volunteering this is a very important committee, especially at this time in our town's history, um, I think one of the metrics that can be pointed to, maybe it's more empirical than uh, that can be measured, is our, our previous principal planner, Jennifer Burke, moved on to become the economic developer, economic development and planning advisor in the town of uh, Bridgewater. And there's a whole group that works for her there. And she had a similar role before she came here in the town of Hudson. So if you want an example of, of the good work that she's done for ex empirical evidence of the importance of the role, um, you can look at downtown Hudson, which is thriving. Uh, you can look at Bridgewater, which is, which is also doing pretty well. So um, in the past, like Elaine's done a part of this role and um, but we really need someone that's full time on this, so I, I support this effort. Um, I'll echo Rob's question about measurements, and I think that's important. But uh, maybe I missed it. But do we have an estimated budget as to what this would cost? I think it depends if they hire a full time, part time, or, or a whole office <coughs> of staff. So I'm going to guess if they started with anything, it would be just one person. Uh, so your recommendation is one person full time? We didn't vote on <laughs> on how many people. We haven't done that. I mean, it's the kind of thing that you can think about. Uh, if you hired somebody, at, say ninety thousand a year, uh, which people can disagree about, but that would end up being about one hundred fifty thousand with burden, and uh, so that that would be one person. If that person had staff, then that person would need an office. So staff would make, you know, say another hundred thousand with burden, and if you give them an office, that's whatever an office costs, another uh, fifteen or twenty. So, uh, you know, it can be anywhere from one hundred and fifty to <coughs> two hundred, I guess. And when you think about it from a measurement point of view, I think that's an excellent question. Um, and I've tried to think about how you would measure it. One way you measure it is 
how does the ratio change between um, uh, commercial tax revenue and, and residential tax revenue. And if you're holding that line, that's a measure of success, whether it's <coughs> enough of one. Um, another is just looking at, I mean, it's mostly going to be what it feels like, whether it feels like there's a, uh, it seems to me, a robust community um, with all the variety that uh, that kind of community is. So one of the real questions for Hoppingham, because rural atmosphere is very important to us, do we certainly don't want to create a situation where we become uh, a metropolitan, what am I trying to think of it? A city as opposed to a town. Right. Uh, so, uh, and I think it's fairly safe to say that that would not happen. So I, I do think this is a good idea. It's certainly come up in conversation um, in other venues <laughs> a lot over the last couple of years. Um, I'd also like to bring up one very related subject, um, and not to derail this this thing, uh, this thing, uh, proposal, but um, at the ZAC, we have been talking a lot about the downtown corridor project and the downtown um, business um, uh, survival plan for that and what we can do from zoning perspective, which is very little from zoning. Um, but um, we did talk about the need for an ombudsman or liaison, but a dedicated person who would be responsible for communicating with um, the construction, project management, and leadership um, on a very regular basis, like, you know, several times a week if necessary um, to determine you know the the location of of all the disruption potentially um, so that that can be communicated to the businesses and that so that signage can be um, uh, can be adjusted appropriately to let uh, customers know where to park and what to do because it's it's going to be a, an ever-changing type of thing going on for the next for, for two years running um, so and it occurs to me that the skill sets could be very similar. Um, certainly, strong project management, but also strong commercial orientation and you know um, outlook um, you know, for for businesses. Talking to a lot of different people and good communication skills. Um, so this is just just you know just throwing it out there. But this is something that possibly it could be the same person doing each thing half time or a little bit more during downtown quarter project and then focusing back onto full economic development after the downtown quarter project is done. Just, just a thought. I like all the ideas. Um, I, do, I, I do think though that um, I would recommend kind of putting your toe in the water first before a, a full-fledged office. Um, uh, perhaps being under the arm of the auspices of the planning department um, only because and then having sort of a wide scripted um, definition for things that perhaps John can't get to right away grant writing um, is, is something that I think um, really hasn't been tackled um, for the economic development wing that I think um, could be very effective as a you know part of that um, job description so I, I think it's really the, the key is finding that job description and seeing um, if, if it can at least you know, get your toe wet by, by hiring one person first and seeing how that goes. And if it becomes overwhelming, um, sort of in the planning board auspices or the planning department auspices, then take that uh, next step. But I would, I would uh, take it, you know, recommend taking it slowly to see what, see what happens. <clears throat> the other um, big question that I have um, is how, um, if this is necessarily going to be ready for annual town meeting, which is what we're trying to do, and there's this deadline of February 3rd for articles, um, necessarily this is an article that needs to come from the select board. So how to get it in front of them um, and uh, encourage them to embrace at least the placeholder item while we... Um, are able to work through some of the details. So I think that that's like the first thing we have to um, 
we have to tackle, right? Um, and potentially, uh, potentially we're, we're not in time for this annual town meeting as well. Potentially we don't have that kind of um, pitch time for the select board and, and uh, other constituency groups um, that might need to be brought on board. Um, but we should at least, that at least has to be part of the timeline right away. Can I just ask one question about that? Do, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't feel like all new positions that we've created have gone through town meeting. And so I'm curious if there are standards or requirements as to that's when true. something like no, this has to go true. to town meeting no, and when right. the yes. select right. board can just act right. upon it. No, you're right. This, is an this isn't necessarily budget. a town meeting. It's a, town, it's a budget yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. And I think that closes in a week. Two. Well, the, the town meeting does close in a week. No, the, oh, the budget, budget process. Yeah, yeah. So we are necessarily, by definition, really late in the process for this year. Um, one of the other things that we talked about, we were just <coughs> working together in the back of the room to look at this this draft to get that feedback, and the feedback has been really, um, it's been very helpful for me at least. Um, is um, is potentially um, this first year having a substantive report out at annual town meeting and structuring some of the um, ideas and initiatives that we would like to see going forward with the, the growth study committee um, effort in the next year. And, and it's, a, it's a much more solid timeline to be thinking in terms of the budget process as well as the following annual town meeting. Um, if we start from there, so it's that's a good sure. idea. Yeah. Sure. When does the uh, growth study expect to have their final report released? So it, we don't have an estimate for that, but yeah, go ahead, Amy. Well, all the towns and boards and committees do a, a report for town meeting, which is due January 31st. So we'll, I'll right. be writing up what we've done so far. But I would think our final report wouldn't be for another year. It would be much yeah, I was kind of thinking final report for this effort. I'm sorry. So yeah, that's okay. I just want them to include traffic in that. Somehow. Traffic. So we've talked a lot about, so um, just because this is an opportunity to get some of the conversation in front of the, the public too, um, I just brought that up as well. Um, Did you? We have, um, with our group, so the, you know, a big piece of the growth pressure was the conversation around the impact of residential growth. And so that's been a big focal point. A lot of, you know, a lot of people supported those forums, which was really helpful. Um, but we do need to, you know, the police and fire have done their own impact work, and we haven't, we don't know what, what the results of that is formally yet. Traffic is another, um, another topic. We're trying to figure out how to, um, how to tackle. Is it necessarily a public forum, or is that just an opportunity for people to sort of vent about the difficulties, or how to, how to, how to tackle um, that question? Um, I think there's a couple of ways you can go about it. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yes, I'm you sure. You can that have there are. engineers. You can have public people comment. I mean, I've made a few comments to your committee. Um, there's a lot of ways we can do, go about it without paying a lot of money. But I, I think, do. Yeah, I think the DPW has some pretty, pretty has knowledgeable some. metrics probably already about when they were creating the light that they're creating down at Legacy Farms North. Um, so I, there, that's some of it. So it's maybe putting the pieces together. I d and I definitely think that it's a pressure point. It's an obvious piece that people want us to talk about. Um, it so makes just sense. Put it on the yeah. Agenda. No, I, I I agree. I appreciate that. Through the chair. Yeah. Um, I like the comment about the um, um, ombudsman, mm -hmm. and as well as the uh, grant writer. Which, and I think we have a part-time grant writer in place. Do you? you might. Even there's well, a we procurement do. officer. I don't I assume they're the Benson, grant writer yeah. as well. And uh, that might be something we could cross um, efforts with if that's a, a slow way of starting, adding to their role. Um, and I, I would prefer that this role stays with land use and planning. Um, so just a note on that the procurement officer is not in land use. Right, 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 right. But I mean, we can half time one, half time the other, if, if, if the person's not full time. I, I think they are. Yeah, Amy. Um, if I could, I, the growth study committee is meeting, I think, again next week, before, so before the budget is due. So I think I will suggest to them and we'll discuss as a committee if we can get some kind of placeholder 
on the warrant, and then it could be discussed for the next couple months. Maybe maybe it could be incorporated into the budget. Maybe it won't move forward. But, but if we get a placeholder on there, then we can discuss it mm -hmm. further and bring more data to you into the select board. Yeah, and I think that um, necessarily it needs to be a little outreach from somebody to um, to we meet the 23rd. Is that right? I think so. Yes. The 23rd. When do this, does the select board meet? Because they would have to um, entertain the conversation. I'm not sure. When, when do they I'm meet? I'm not sure. I don't yeah. Know. So we'd have to so. figure that out um, if, it, if it works and requests some time. So select board meets on February 4th. Is that when they're hearing the budget then? It, you yes. know, so it, it's um, this is January 31st. Town manager uh, submits budget, but that's just in writing. I mean, not in a meeting. But I, I believe any board or committee can put an article on the warrant. I don't think it has to be. Yeah, indeed, we can. Uh, yes, board. indeed, right. Um, so it just uh, what I was trying to invite was the conversation about how that made them most sense um, so for, and and to hopefully engender the most early support through the chair can I make one more comment of course so I I think this totally could be a, a good thing I didn't want to derail by measurement <laughs> like but people's minds I think people in town a lot of them are going to jump to the school budget schools are for a lot of people in town are priority number one so justify this over a teacher or potentially a couple teachers is a big thing or a new school but a new classroom or whatever could be funded um, but if if there's a there go your metrics yeah they, so if you can if it can be justified mm -hmm. and the return on investment um, like it, it helps tax base grow for uh, commercial development mm -hmm. Absolutely it's, it's, right. it's an easy it's an easy sell yeah. okay. and but a lot of residents are going to be I think the same with just what I'm saying. They're going to think about the schools first, and like we're going to fund this and not fund a couple teachers. Well, if this pays for itself and then then some on uh, commercial uh, revenue, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, okay. I, I think that's yeah. very good advice. Madam Chair, may I just make one other comment? Of course. Sort of more on a general basis. Amy has led us really well uh, through this whole process over the last fall, and one of the efforts out there. I think people wondered, well, what are you doing? How are you going to stop the growth? And uh, at first we had to learn some things. And one of the things that we decided to do was benchmarking across all, uh, all sorts of different kinds of towns, the towns that are right next to us, the towns that, are, towns that we might aspire to be like. Um, and so we've, we've, we've got a lot of data that shows how Hopkinton compares. Uh, to all these towns, and then we have a lot of data that shows how Hopkinton has grown. And uh, one, we've, the kinds of things that we've been learning is that we've had bumps before of growth, and then it's not all just been sudden a hockey stick at the end. And I, this is a, as much as anything an advertisement for the people at home to take a look at the presentation yes. that's been done, which is available on HCAM. Um, Chuck Joseph delivered it in both instances that, that we've done it publicly, and it's fairly, it's very interesting and quite eye-opening for people. Yeah, I think I, I was just thinking that's a great reminder that it's out there. Um, at least the, the compilation of the information that we've been able to pull together and, and the message we're starting to see within that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I'm gonna. Before we start, I was going to have Mary lead us through the zoning articles. John, do you have particular comments on them first, or do you want to introduce them each and then Mary go? Or oh, Mary wants to. Do it. I, I yeah. don't mind introducing them. Or just I can check go through them. them. Um, maybe the housekeeping ones. Just uh, yeah. First of all, timeline is all you. <laughs> Definitely. That's what's up here. Okay. Um, so the, the big one is that the. Town meeting warrant closes on February 3rd. So um, basically, it's this meeting and then the 27th that the planning board can vote to put something onto the warrant. Okay. 
and this think, counts as the okay. yeah I think so but we had we had one more meeting scheduled as as the zoning advisory committee and we were going to um, discuss two other potential articles for this year at that one and that's next Thursday that's the 23rd and so it would be you know it would be ready for the 27th but that would be their last chance okay um, all right, so why don't you go through the industrial bee housekeeping sure. one? So the industrial bee housekeeping is pretty simple. It's just a numbering issue. It's not consistent with how the rest of the bylaw is numbered, so uh, this is just fixing that. So it's currently numbered by letter, and it's going to change it to parenthetical numbers. That's really it. Well, the other thing I want to make sure I say is that necessarily once we get um, this preliminary work done, there is a public hearing that the public is invited to on Correct. each of the articles. When is that? Uh, I think that's in February, March. Okay. Timeline. So oh, there it's after the warrant. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We had to do that before the warrant, so I thought today had to be. <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. So there will, right, so there will be, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to add anything. That's right. how we get it. It was challenging last but, year. But you can change it. the wording and you can after the public and you hearing. Can remove. Oh, okay. Yes, and Got you can it. remove them or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, that makes sense. So we still will have a formal public hearing. This is an, a, a more detailed introduction of what's in front of us. Okay, good. Um, the wireless telecommunication facilities is also essentially a housekeeping item. Um, that one, just trying to find that, pull that up. Okay. Um, it, it is, the changes are all in regards to making it compliant with new federal <coughs> regulations. So, and, and we're already complying with those regulations, obviously, but, um, but this simply catches up our zoning. All right. So I'm not going to go through all the wording because it's really it wasn't wording that we came up with. <laughs> no. All right. So it's with the federal guidelines. Federal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. The accessory family dwelling unit. Here. Now I have this in red line. Um, which I just sent to you. I don't know if you want to throw it up on the screen. Um, if that would everybody okay here we go so okay accessory family dwelling unit is essentially putting an apartment on your house to accommodate potentially you know an, an um, elderly relative or something like that so that's that's why it exists that's what it's there for okay this uh, it, it is not related to the other uh, article we're talking about which is changes to non-conforming structures things like that so, okay. the idea here um, is we wanted to keep this particular bylaw um, such that the, the single family dwelling uh, keeps the look and feel of a single family dwelling and the single family neighborhood and it doesn't look like it's an apartment building or an extra apartment on a house or anything like that. So, so th but we also wanted to potentially open this up to make it um, possible for an extra apartment on a house to be used for a caregiver, not somebody related. We also wanted to come into the 21st century in terms of a definition of family, which is not always related by blood, what do we, blood adoption or Mm -hmm. marriage um, so there's a lot of other definitions of family but ne nonetheless to still keep this um, and we had a lot of you know arguments both sides of this you know why don't we open it up a lot more why don't we open it up less you know that sort of thing it's really all about um, trying to make um, staying in town from birth to death more affordable um, more reasonable that sort of thing okay so so the existing um, the existing bylaw has family dwelling unit in its title, and we would strike that and strike it when it's referred to in several other paragraphs. Um, in, in paragraph C, we're striking um, the existing unit shall accommodate additional family unit only if the um, family is related by blood, marriage, or adoption, or 60 years of age or, or older. Now, the 60 years of age or older, it's not legal for us to have that in there anyhow. So it's, it's really, that change is not a matter of our choice or discussion. <laughs> um, in paragraph E, we want to strike the sentence that talks about an interior doorway 
needs to be provided between the units. Um, I know from um, the ZBA that oftentimes they give a waiver for that anyhow because it's, you know, just, just it, it doesn't work on the, a lot when somebody comes in. It doesn't work to design it. Um, and then probably most importantly, it's the, it's the final paragraph, and that's the definition. Okay? So to say the definition, accessory dwelling unit shall mean dwelling unit contained within or being an extension of a single family structure to accommodate a caregiver or service provider or an additional family only if a member of the additional family is related to the owner of the premises. That leaves related open because the blood marriage and adoption just doesn't fit anymore. So there's some people who felt that was, you know, that we should strike that entirely and just say it could be anybody. Or, and then some people felt like we should make it more restrictive, but this is the compromise we came to, <laughs> okay? <laughs> the other piece that I wanted to point out to all of you is that um, we, we, we certainly have tried to change this in the past. And um, the most recent time was a couple of years ago at town meeting. We tried to change a lot of different parts of this. And it, because, because it, it hit a lot of different people within town meeting as, oh, I don't like that part. And then the next person, oh, I don't like that part. We feel like it's necessary to change these things in small ways and then maybe in a year or two, go back and try to change something else and see how town meeting reacts to it. But since they have to vote on it all or nothing, they don't get to vote on it line item by line item, we needed to keep the changes relatively simple and small. Okay. Uh, can I just ask a quick question? Is there some, uh, on the accessory dwelling units, I understand the complexities, is there some like uh, global set of um, changes that might be contemplated, that might be attractive? I know that we're starting with one small piece, but are there, are there other obvious things that might be on this X? Well, there's some people who feel like in paragraph G, the 800 square foot and floor area should be modified. Okay. Either increased or not. Yeah. Yep, decreased. Yep. Um, there was discussion um, in this, uh, in our meeting, in this team meeting, um, about paragraph K and that it shouldn't have to have an, uh, an occupancy permit renewed every two years by the owner. Um, that that was burdensome and kind of silly. Mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. but we decided not to touch that this time. Okay. All right. Um, and two years ago, they, somebody tried to remove the requirement for an affidavit, I think, and that didn't. This, that yeah, the, again, within the occupancy permit section, yeah, was to was to try to try to make it less burdensome. Okay. Uh, through the chair, can you just clarify at the top of it? I think it still says 600 square feet, but then there's a. Uh, if you go all the way up to the top. It's the yeah 125. Uh, each dwelling unit, so okay. That's actually a different oh, sorry. article. Thank you. Sorry, never mind. Okay. Sure. That's what threw me off because no I thought we had increased the size to 800 feet. We tried. It is 800. It is 800. It is. It is. No, yeah, but up above, he oh. means. Yeah. yeah. Which is a different article. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, um, I just want to make sure I don't know if there's people from the public that have opinion on this. No? Okay. I know Mr. Barker Hook has had some strong opinions on this in the past, so <laughs> just Mr. Barker Hook has well expressed himself at the ZAC. And I think I think Yeah. And I think I think we came up with a good compromise because of him. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And okay. then something else? Okay. Good, the chair. I oh. just want to applaud your effort. I think this is a very nice piece of work that you've worked through. Thank you. I appreciate it as well. Thank you for saying that. And I thank Mr. Terry for bringing it up again. Because I was, I was treating it as a third rail and I wasn't going to do anything with it. <laughs> but maybe there's a different way, right? And he came up with a different way. He, he encouraged us to. Right. Through the chair, one, one comment. The, the, 
to me, the, the whole last sentence is related to. Have we asked town council? To me, that just means anybody. It has, it has to go through town council, yeah. It will have to go through town council. Anyway. But that whole term, like right now as it's written, that opens it up to anybody. Like, is that the intent? If that's the intent, just, I, would, I would prefer to see language as plain as that, not trying to masquerade it as something that, that related was, to. That was basically where I was sitting in. And, and in general, uh, the consensus of the, of the uh, Zoning Advisory Committee was that leave the phrase in, because then it at least makes people think it really should be somebody you're not just renting to off, to off the street. It really should be somebody you know, related to you in some way. You know, it's your it's your best friend's son who doesn't have a place to live. What like baby it, steps? <laughs> Maybe next year. I do I do see the conundrum there with the word related. It's just I I don't like. It. Is it anyone anyone in here in this room is related? We have a relationship through the planning board. <laughs> through, like, yeah. through the I would like you all to live in an accessory. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is it is it reasonable to consider that um, rent can't be collected or I, I don't know I'm just thinking of you know because if they're if they're I don't know maybe that doesn't work I'm just trying to think of other ways to I mean uh, getting to the intent of what we're trying to avoid we're trying to avoid people turning them to apartments yeah that's what we're trying to apartment. avoid but at the same time um, um, you know I would in renting renting a unit like this to my twenty-something yep, child, I would want to charge rent. <laughs> yep, no, you're right. And so, yeah, I think I think if but we try to get too much into the, the weeds, it yeah, it, I don't know. In, in I that do situation where, sorry, uh, in that situation where it's rented to a child, it would realistically never go before any town government. It would never be there would never be any written contract. It'd never be anything, and, at least in my opinion. Well, if it is allowed to be built, right? It would probably be pre. Well, yeah. That's, that's, that's what that. this is about. This is it's about, about, building, about being yeah. able to make it, right? So while we would not see, we would never the zoning, uh, the um, ZBA would never see the contract between the owner and whoever is utilizing the space. That wouldn't ever be something we did. It's a good point. Two are very yeah. different. Right? It's a good thought, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. So there, there is um, just to, from a process perspective, um, it's uh, it's important to recognize that typically we have a lot of enthusiastic uh, participation at the, at the public hearing that we do on the zoning articles, um, and definitely bring your you know your thoughts and comments and and suggestions. And by that time, the the uh, town council will have looked at it too, and we'll get their feedback. Can I ask one more question? Course. Sorry. No. Um, I'm just wondering if there's if there's a history of people applying for this in the past, or uh, if there's any press, if there's any past history of of people requesting um, dwelling units for non-family members. And I'm trying to sort out if this is I really a, 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 an inclusive language uh, um, driver, or if this is a function of. Um, people feeling like they, they couldn't do something because this was overly restrictive? I think people have wanted to have one for caregivers and they can't okay. right now. I think people spoke at Tommy last year, okay. two years ago. Okay. And, and, and so so if that was the case, then, then even the, uh, the Board of Appeals would not be able to grant that? And I, I guess I'm just wondering if there's, I, I mean, I mean to, to, to Rob's concerns, I'm just thinking through, like, if this is the exception rather than the norm, can we allow this to be approved through an exception process and which 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 allows for some level of, of um, subjective uh, consideration my understanding is that you know there's there's you know they can get a special permit if they follow these rules but then it's like a separate step the variance or variance yeah for if if they have if they are going outside of these rules, so we're trying to make the rules themselves less restrictive, so people don't have to get variances; they only have to get the special permit. So, and to be um, to just the a use variance is almost never allowed at a space constrictive mm -hmm. site variance. I can't remember the right word for it, but a use variance is. Mm -hmm. Um, rarely granted. So, so currently, for a non-family member, this would be a use variance. Yeah, I think so. 
I mean, that's what that's how okay. I would read it. Or, um, or people lie. And, you know, I don't think that we want to set up our rules such that people say, this is so restrictive, but I really need it, so I'm going to lie to them. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I, so I, I understand. I, I was just, just looking for if yeah. there was some, again, if it's, if it's a, a very, very small number of situations where you think this may occur, then, then can we manage it through an exception process instead of rewriting the rules that people feel like might expose them in some capacity? I'm trying to think in terms of, um, like, it makes ultimate sense to me that a caregiver would be somebody that you would mm -hmm. want to have this possible for. Also, an adult child returning, um, a, an older family member who needs extra supports, it all makes sense. And those are, we, the age restriction has to go, and that's interesting to me, of course. Um, but is there a way to say it that we can, so we're necessarily changing the language intentionally because we don't want to, we want to bring it into the 21st century? Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to say it that, um, that captures the whole intent, right? Can we, can we find the right words to say what it is we're really trying to do? We're striking the, the words that, that identify blood relation or adoption or marriage. Um, but is there, a, is there a more inclusive language that, that captures what we are hoping we'll see. Okay. Should we just keep this at a high level just to get it on yeah. the warrant and then go forward? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. No, maybe, totally. maybe we're yeah, going to yeah. Maybe. But sometimes this is helpful at this point in the process, just, just exactly like with the Growth Study Committee. Everybody yeah. around this table yeah. makes a contribution that is really valuable, um, even though we're in the, the early stages of trying to make an ad dash for the warrant. Sure. So through the chair, if I can provide some clarification. Yeah. What we talked about at Zach, I think the two examples that I personally think illustrate why this change would be needed is you have a close family friend. Um, they might be getting on in years, and they need a place to live. They don't want to live at their house anymore. They're not related. They're not ever going to be related by marriage, blood, or, or they're not going to be a caregiver, mm -hmm. but they could live in your house. They were related. Um, or you have a son or daughter. Their significant other wants to live there, but they don't have a place to live. They're not related. They're, right. they're not married. So there would be those kind of situations. I think there is some uh, subjectivity in the ZBA granting the special permit because they would need to say, what is the relationship? And if, if it's somebody that you just met on the street that you want to rent a place to, there'd be no relationship. You'd basically be lying, which anyone could do. Anyone could theoretically. do. Anyway. So it, it would be, <laughs> I think the ZBA has the ability to say, well, that's not really a relationship that we would classify as related. Um, if it's a close family friend or significant other that isn't married, I think that's kind of what Zach was trying to capture. Yeah. I think the important thing in this whole thing that I picked up is that you're keeping the dwellings looking like they're single family. The second, so that you maintain that rural characteristic of Hopkinton, which we're all looking for. The second thing I thought was that unnecessary need for a secondary door between the dwelling and the main house because the zoning or the building code already requires two doors in each unit. So it was an unne unnecessary burden mm -hmm. for families and friends to carry. And it seems to me like in this day and age that we need to try and look outside the box and try and take care of. Do we really care what happens on the inside of the building? Is that what you're trying to say? No. <laughs> yeah. but no, not at all. No, but re but realistically, we don't really want to get into people's business no, about we don't. how they, no, how I they don't, decide I how don't they want to use the space that they need to manage how people are living or... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I... You know, again, I think it's it's an important step going forward. Who knows what town meeting will do? Yeah. But it's more conversation. Mm -hmm. Is there still? Um, I apologize, I didn't read the whole thing. Um, is there still a percentage? The the accessory dwelling unit can only be a certain percentage of the other Not side. Not in this bylaw. So then it does say it does say it, it's a, um, a qualitative statement. Instead of quantitative, it says it has to be subordinate to the main dwelling, and and it also says no more than 800 square feet. So, well, um, right, that, currently that it says no more than 800 square feet. Right, it has to be subordinate too. So, mm -hmm. so that implies that the main dwelling unit has to be more than 800 square yeah. feet. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we can probably move on. That that will get. I think that's going to be conversation. Has, it, has anyone seen the film Parasite? <laughs> no. So there's a covered basement apartment. We had to see the film to get it. 
Okay. It's the next one. Okay, so the next one is non-conforming lots, uses, and structures. This was brought to us by Mike Shepard. Um, who also so one was, uh, did we skip the solar overlay? Oh, I was, I was doing that. She's going to the easy ones first. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead. Do the easy ones first. Do the easy ones first. Sure. That's right. Um, okay, so this was brought to us by Mike Shepard and, and, um, and Mark Hyman also um, uh, gave his, you know, his, his generalized approval mm -hmm. that something like this would be a good idea. Um, so right now, when someone wants to make a change to their dwelling, alter their dwelling. This has nothing to do with putting on a new unit. It's just, just changing their dwelling there. Um, they do need to go before ZBA if, um, if, their, if their structure, you know, is in any way not meeting the requirements of setback, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But, right. you know, it's previous, it, it's an existing structure, mm -hmm. but, you know, maybe it doesn't have the setback that it's required because it's, you know, it's 100 years old or something like that. Um, so what he suggested is that instead of automatically having to go to ZBA, when it's a minor change, and we defined a minor change in a couple of ways, mm -hmm. when it's a minor change, the zoning enforcement officer has the ability to waive the ZBA, the special permit requirement, okay? So um, the, the way we defined minor was the proposed alteration doesn't alter the footprint of the existing dwelling, <coughs> and it doesn't alter the overall height of the uh -huh. dwelling. So two examples of this, which he said do occur relatively often, are dormers, um, raising the dormers on a house, and enclosing a porch. Okay? So currently, they have to go through the whole process, and it is relatively expensive for relatively minor changes, expensive and time-consuming for you know uh -huh. just a homeowner so um and there's there's lots of different views on how we would make this work but um but this is the the last paragraph is um is our suggestion that um they uh the 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 homeowner or whoever's doing the changes needs to get a certified list of abutters within 300 feet of the property line and get their agreement by signature on the plans that themselves so something with dimensions with plans so they're signing actually on that or a copy of it and that is what they submit to the zoning enforcement officer um, and so that they agreed but if but if anybody objects any of the abutters object it goes to ZBA and then they can talk about it at ZBA and that way we don't put the zoning enforcement officer in an awkward position of saying, well, you know, this one objector, we're going to ignore them. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they can have their say. And, but, but then, of course, most homeowners would go and talk to their neighbors anyhow and make sure it's okay with them. And that's good. And, you know, we want to encourage that. Um, so so that's, uh, that was the proposal. And that was, that was a suggestion. It makes know, great from, sense. Yeah, coming from Mike Shepard. Okay. I think that makes a lot of sense. I live in a neighborhood with old houses very close to the property line, and I've gotten many notices as an abutter that they're going to build a non-conforming structure that's no more non-conforming than the previous uh, structure, like a deck, replacing a deck with a new deck that's no more close to the property line than the current deck, and it's, it seems silly that they have to go to the ZBA or something like that. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Was a fun one. So, this has been uh, Ted's baby at, at the Zoning Advisory Committee. Um, <clears throat> he he researched ways to uh, that that other towns were dealing with solar overlay. Um, so ground mounted solar. This has nothing to do with building mounted solar, which is you know totally. Um, 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 worked out through a different type of uh, bylaw and rules. So, the ground mounted solar. Um, and he discovered that, um, and we've already run this by town council as well, is that by creating um, an overlay district where we say explicitly where solar farms are allowed in town, um, that is legal 
it does it has passed through the, you know the state the attorney general and everything like that and we can potentially um, do a better job of controlling and not having clear cutting and things like that so the map that you're looking at up there on the screen with the quizzical looks on your faces <laughs> is um, what we defined as the, the plots are all the existing solar farms or ones that we have approved is this one or one as, well as, <laughs> as well as um, the 495.90 cloverleaf yeah. and the space between the um, the two lanes of 495. Median. Median strip. And Harvey's transfer station. Oh, and Harvey's. Okay, so that's, so all the other blocks around the town, other than Harvey's, are the existing solar farms or recently approved solar farms that haven't been built yet. That's it. So if I may. Go ahead. Yeah. Harvey's yeah. transfer station. This is the median this is uh part of the 495 corridor i think it's uh probably like a dp it? uh a so mass state, state facility or something. Mass oh, okay. it's it's basically the same parcel as this whole road yep. okay so it wasn't separated yeah. this is wood street solar yeah tja solar yeah. east main solar yeah. this is the 71 franklin solar that is currently submitted and will be yeah. before the planning board next meeting uh lumber street solar and hayden row solar okay and this will change because they've submitted the A&R, but it hasn't been incorporated in the GIS. So it's basically this parcel and then the top piece of this parcel. This bottom piece is the Liberty Mutual site. And that has been sectioned off into a different lot. Okay. So that will likely not be included in a final overlay district map. So John, if I'm counting correctly, eight parcels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep. And is, um, the 135, um solar does that expand within that the exact footprint that it shows there no so these are just the parcels that they're allowed on so even the lumber street solar is the entire parcel um, so it's just that'll be determined by right so th basically what this would allow is that they could still do solar anywhere on this parcel they'd still have to come before the planning board for a special permit um, but it would be allowed okay so the the lumber street is not that's their whole parcel that is not as big as the correct the wood street <coughs> Correct, yeah, yeah. and it, it goes actually on both sides of 495 yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Huh. Did you consider including South Street, the industrial commercial zones? We didn't. Uh, there wasn't a lot of developable land there, so that's why it was left out, but it's definitely open to additions or subtractions. Through the chair, how, yeah. many, how many of these parcels actually have solar panels today on them on um them. all of them except for franklin wood street because they haven't developed it yet uh harvey transfer station 495 obviously and i believe lumber street has some i'd have to check well, wilson doesn't and yeah, I think and T yeah, right and tj solar on, on wilson street hasn't been developed yet but it's been approved and one the one off of 135 i think there's par partially it's got some panels on some panels yeah. To the chair, just a comment to Amy's suggestion. I would, I would think that most of the stuff on South Street would be rooftop. I would think, you know, there's not really a lot. The parking. The parking. The parking lot. The parking. That would be a, that. But that still be, that yeah. doesn't change though. That's still a lot. That yeah. That but doesn't require a special. So I would just the suggest that we don't add it. Because it's accessory to the special. Have, that's my point. Or it's special it's to use. I'm just it's a little concerned perfect. that it's an awfully small map and. You know, commercial industrial would be an area where I wouldn't mind having solar, commercial solar, because there aren't any, aren't trees. To the chair, just once again, one of the, I think one of the main goals of this is to limit, right? So. It's where we limited too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know, and uh, there are some, like we added Harvey's, and it makes total sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, even like the, uh, this is probably opening a can of worms, but the Fruit Street parcel that was an old gravel pit. That's right. Um, you know, I know that it was entertained one no, time, but it's an old gravel know. pit, and there's there's place that they could, you know, it's down on property. But, but I think but I, keeping most of the gravel and taking down most of the trees. Um, um, well, it, it's been it's been cleaned out, but I don't know. Open space has been talking a lot about that. Um, 
removing trees and 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 with solar panels especially, replacing it with um, pollinators and grasses and flowers are just as important mm -hmm. as um, the removal of trees. So there mm -hmm. might be a happy medium here that we can still have a conversation about. Yeah, I kind of like that it, it's, you know, the, I, th I think the, the 495 quarter is a piece of brilliance um, because it doesn't impede on, on any, you know, Viewscape or, or you know, encourage the taking down of trees. Doesn't that belong to DOT though? Do we even have any authority over that? So we no. talked about that. So we can zone it, but th when talking to town council, one of the issues was if that was the only zoning that allowed solar, it could be thought of as uh, prohibitively restrictive because the, the the bar to get a permit from mass dot and then zoning from the town would be difficult but however <clears throat> adding that on to what we've already got isn't a problem so to the chair question for john um so if somebody wanted to um install a commercial solar array on a parcel that was not identified in this overlay in this overlay uh, uh zoning requirement then how would they go about doing that? They wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't be able to. So they'd have to. They'd have to go change the zoning bylaw to add an additional parcel, and then, if that was approved, then they could Correct. add a solar commercial solar they installation. Apply for a bit variance, or which would be that, to That's get. a good question. They could potentially yeah. apply for a variance. Yeah. Um, I like Amy's suggestion of um, South Street because I think that um, the mass of large parking lots that are sort of just sitting there are very um, sort of disturbing and they're not being used for anything and I think it's actually potential potential for grooming them and making them even better. I'm so sorry, I didn't hear at the beginning what parking lots? The um, s Some of the vacant buildings that are on South, on Street. South Street. Yeah, all those huge parking lots. Um, so I, I, I would, I would, uh, can, yeah. So the, those would be accessory. Those wouldn't be covered under the special permit. Those can be done right now. Oh, okay. They're accessory to the primary use. Okay. Like the mass dot facility on Mac Adam has uh, solar panels on the parking. Mm -hmm. okay. They didn't have to get a special permit. Okay. Through the chair, I, I, yeah. I know we talked a lot about this before. About we really had a very lim, uh, very little way to restrict solar in town. I thought from the state we were kind of mandated to not make it restrictive. Can we enforce this? So yeah. So I think that the 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 thing is is that we have to have we within the zone that we allow solar. We can't be restrictive, but we can decide where we can zone solar, um, and then not be overly restrictive in the zone that solar is allowed. And just to add on to it, it's been done for other towns. Yeah, we heard that that it has been done for other towns. Um, did in this conversation was there any resistance to this idea? No. Hold on. Uh, no, other than just, just uh, is it going to be allowed? How how could that yeah. be allowed? Yeah. Uh, you know, Mr. Barker Hook was very persistent in trying to figure this out because we'd always gone on the assumption of what we've been told. You know that that it can't be restricted. It's like, well, he found that it can be restricted, and this is how. I knew I liked that guy. <laughs> Frank. I like that too, but I disagree. Um, while I'm all for not cutting down trees, uh, I think it's more important to not be so restrictive. Say, this is what we have, this is all we're going to have ever, because the technology changes, <coughs> uh, land use, and I, places change, the labor trade. The labor's union, they're selling their property. Um, but we're going to be facing, the next planning board is going to be facing a lot of more construction ideas, what's going to go in there. So if something like this would, were to pass a town meeting, it would really restrict what the next developer that takes on that property could do. Um, I think there's lots of nooks and crannies here and there about that could be useful places uh, for solar power. I think Jane's idea of other, other greenery would be very helpful is what happens at the Westboro solar farm at uh, Harvey's. Um, 
at their farm farm. Um, so I just don't want to be so restrict restrictive about it, uh, and I balance that with the need for not cutting down trees, but um, there are properties and spaces that maybe someone could come up with an idea that would be useful and, and productive. And every solar panel that's out there is saving a lot of oxygen uh, from being having to be burned for electricity by coal and oil, etc. So they offset their, their carbon footprint uh, a, great, a great deal. If I may, um, just to address what Frank brought up, and, and certainly I didn't want to sound cavalier about, oh yeah, we want to restrict solar, you know, that the point um, that we were really trying to get to is that, is that it can be put on houses, it can be put on buildings, it can be put on parking lots. It doesn't have to go into a forest. And that's what all we've been seeing lately is that's what's happening to town. And I think that's what, what um, concerns us the most, is that that's happening. But this absolutely, we would encourage that it go on every house and every um, building in town that is possible. And over parking lots, I love it over parking lots, but not on bare land, not in forest land. Through the chair, I made this point earlier, we, we spoke about it. The town of Brookline is requiring solar panels on all new buildings, so that's maybe that, that, that's a pro proactive approach I would like the town to take, but I haven't put anything together for it. I know you guys are working, doing a lot of work on this, but I wouldn't want to be so restrictive over town, especially where we're the jumping off point for the Green Communities Act. Through the chair, just one quick comment to piggyback on Frank's comment. I was talking with another private property owner, not a commercial property owner who is thinking of putting solar on his property. And it, currently it's just weeds, woods, you know, junk stuff. And he's looking into developing greenhouses under his uh, solar panels. So to Frank's point, there's a lot of technology that hasn't been developed yet mm -hmm. that we may not want to restrict. But that, at this, this point, would that, not restrict that wouldn't it. restrict something like that, an accessory to the it's greenhouse. It's an accessory use. The solar panels are an accessory to the main use of the greenhouses, so it wouldn't restrict greenhouses. I, I don't understand. The greenhouses. Is that what you just you said? Just though? said he was oh. putting greenhouses underneath the solar panels. Right. So the greenhouses are the main use, and the solar panels. I don't any, know enough anybody about can it. put solar panels on their own personal <laughs> property too. Yeah, that's right? the point I, I think the yeah, solar okay. panels were first, and then the greenhouses were second. But I don't know enough about it, so I'm going to back off. <laughs> Yeah. No, but I, I mean, I, I think that, I think we're, you know, we all want to promote uh, green energy and solar panels and reducing our carbon footprint. Um, and I think we've all been deeply troubled with big, large tracts of land just being, um, you know, leveled and trees cleared to put up solar panels. So it seems, you know, it, it works against itself a little bit in my mind. Much rather you, much rather double up the use and use property that's already been disturbed um, uh, or is being reclaimed in some way and then also as accessory unit you know, accessory uses to any kind of structure building development personal property commercial property I, I was just gonna make a point that um, these are good questions and they're gonna yeah. come up in the town yeah. meeting yeah. so we should, should if we vote to put this on the warrant we should yeah. make Be a prepared. point to address <laughs> yeah. exactly what Mary yeah, no. and yourself okay. and John are saying about the accessory piece of yeah. it, that yeah. anybody could still put it on their You're right. individual You're right. lot. Yeah, yeah, it's an excellent point. And through the chair, if I can just add, this is draft. This is, I don't even think Zach saw this because I put this together with IT like on Friday. Okay. So if there are properties that you think would be appropriate to add, I mean, just going through the map, I noticed there's uh, a farm. It's one of these two, I believe. Looks like there's an open space, possibly an old farm back here. And over here, there's a smaller open space that looks like it's just grass. Those would be something that might be um, what we're looking for, some type of fallow farm that's not being used, but could be used as a farm because these solar panels aren't necessarily detrimental to using that land in the future. So uh, Pratt Farm could also be another one. I know the, the town is uh, moving forward with some type, some type of proposal for uh, farm there. Mm -hmm. But that could be an option. Yeah. And if you know of any other properties that are like that, yeah. uh, we can definitely add them to this map. And through the chair, just 
we're not to John's point. This is a draft tonight. We just vote to put it on or not. We we can tweak this afterwards, right? We have Correct. And, we and have like four months or something to tweak it, or so the the actual uh, map is just referenced in here, and that is filed with the town clerk prior to town meeting. So you can update the map. Uh, It'd be interesting for people to do some do some legwork and see you know where that where we might you know really desire to. Would you offer individual property owners or commercial property owners to weigh in? Anybody can weigh in, yes. right? It's going to be a public I mean, hearing, right? It's a public imagine hearing. somebody coming to a town meeting and seeing their... So they would have to... So orange. since this is a zoning map, they would all <laughs> so have to get notified already, prior to town meeting. Oh, I know. Oh, but a butters, a butters oh. and property owners would have to get notified. And oh, yeah. We're, I'm going to be doing outreach once we identify the properties that aren't solar already to say, hey, your property is being zoned for solar. Just FYI, is there any issues you have? So just a couple of thoughts. One, um, you know, to, to, uh, maybe this is what, what Jane was getting at, but, um, you know, if there was some type of request for public input um, on additional properties to be considered, so that if somebody had a property in which they wanted to consider a future solar, then, you know, maybe that's something that we would want to consider. Um, so just, you know, it's just, it's just a way of sort of, I mean, I, I, I think we want to be really careful about assigning that to someone else's property, but if it's their property and they want it to be included, then, then maybe that's something that we could look at here. Um, so the challenge with that is if, if there's a hearing, planning board has a hearing in say March and somebody comes into that public hearing and says, I want my property to be uh, added to this map. You have to notify the abutters of that property so that they know that it's also getting added. And the if the public. timeline doesn't work out, that can be a challenge. Yep. And I would, yep. through the chair, I would be afraid that I would be like, oh, yeah, put my property on that map just to be safe. Put it on there, put it on there, everybody. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, we don't have to put it on there, but, but right. at least right. that, if there's a substantial parcel that, yeah. that would probably make sense for solar, then we could consider that. Yeah. I was going to ask somebody to have a second point. I, I did. I just wanted to say that, that overall, I'm, I'm really supportive of this, con of this concept, and, and kudos to Mr. Parker Hook and to the yeah. Zach for, for doing this. Um, and uh, just one last point. I, you know, while we shouldn't be making zoning changes to be temporary, um, if there are future technology or developments or parcels that, that would be ideally suited, um, there's nothing to say that through a future zoning change that another parcel of land could be added. And we see that, you know, with other uses. Um, and I think there's a, a track record of, of developers applying for, um, you know, zoning changes for particular parcels. So just... But it is it is a heavy lift. Um, it is. Uh, admittedly, because it has to go to a, a town meeting, but it does happen. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So, just the comment I want to make, and I've made this before. I'll just repeat it. But um, Carol De Caroline Dakema is putting in legislation to get more benefits for brown right. conversion to solar to green, and I think that already goes, exists. Oh, what do you mean there exists? It's There's already a, a additional incentive. For um, brown conversion, there is for. Was it recent? Or? Right. No, it's been that for for at least a year. Let's shut offline because you and I can talk about that. Um, I was not aware of that. But the point I wanted to make is that I think a lot of our goals, as we said, is to not cut down trees to put in there. So if we look at properties to add on here, I would suggest that it fits that mold, right? That we're not looking at taking down trees. That's all I was going to say. Yeah, Jane. Uh, are we voting on this tonight? We can vote to put these on the warrant tonight, certainly. Um, there will be a public hearing when we take a formal vote on whether or not we support them. I'll leave it right? So there's, and traditionally, um, a lot of people attend, um, and there's a lot of comment at that public hearing on all of them. And then we take our vote. And we can edit that enough time. And we can, we can edit them as we go. So the, the key piece that we're doing right now uh, and we'll do before February 3rd is any article we hope to have on town meeting or, or hope to be able to consider for town meeting has to be voted to be uh, the placeholder has to be voted to put it on the warrant. So you always pull something off. We, we can always on. yeah we can't add but we can always pull off. Yep. Okay. All right. And that was the list, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Mary. I actually really appreciate that right. because it's a better idea than the one that that I had in terms of thinking longer and having some maybe potentially a moratorium and um, coming back in a year. So I appreciate the effort that went into that. So, could I
Did I make a motion to put those as placeholders on the warrant? Yes. Okay. So, okay. So, any further discussion on those uh, articles that we've discussed? Amendment. Friendly amendment. I'd like to take the solar overlay district and consider it separately. That's okay to consider it separately. Yeah. Second. So, yes. So, that's a friendly amendment is accepted. Thank you. So, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And abstentions. Okay, so then the solar overlay. Do you want to, somebody want to move it and second it? Move to place it on the warrant Sorry. as a holding place. And Dave seconded. Okay, discussion. Discussion. Well, I oppose this because I do feel it is too restrictive. Uh, no matter what's for, I think when we make a law or bylaw that is geared for something that we have personal choice personal feelings about it's maybe not the best way to legislate so um, I'm against it uh, for scientific reasons and uh, legal reasons um, one, one, uh, I agree through, through the chair one of the things that just comes to just screams at me in this map even though there's these districts with all the other uses of like uh, being an accessory to a dwelling the real cover like the potential coverage area of solar on the on basically parcels of land, it's got to be over 50% of the town can have a solar installation, whether it's for their own use or if it's on a dwelling back, back to the grid. Like, the idea that this is restrictive is just nonsense to me. <laughs> just. I agree. <laughs> Wait, who are you agreeing? So you, you, agree, you, you agree in both, both directions, Jane. I'm, I'm yeah. confused as well. Yeah. I'm conflicted. Yeah, there you go. Like Which is fair. That's it's, totally it's fair. A tough, I'm going it's to a tough subject. Office. That's because I'm not. Yeah, right. <laughs> not to go back. Very and, convincing. Yeah. You know, well, guess what? This is what the town meeting's going to be like. Exactly. And we're conflicted. No, this is a microcosm of town meeting. And then the public <laughs> hearing is another is another taste of the microcosm we're yeah. experience. So through the chair, if I could provide some clarification, yeah. I don't know if this is going to help. I feel better if I said it. The map as it stands right now can be changed. It's not, I don't think you guys are voting for this map in particular. It's just to add an overlay district right. to the warrant. So this map could theoretically have every property in town on it. Which would make no sense. Which would but, make no sense. But, but theoretically. But, yes. <laughs> yeah. theoretically. Yeah. But, but I think that um, it's important to know how you're feeling about it, uh, you know, as it's conceptually being um, suggested to us. Um, so I appreciate that. I would rebut um, Frank on the um, environmental sensitivity of it. It's not a scientific proof of fact that solar voltaic is more productive than trees. We, we went through this before, and we actually um, did the analysis, and we found out it was pretty equal. We looked at all the charts that you showed us, Frank, so, and it was proven that it was a trade-off. Um, but in the fact that the earth needs roots and it needs to have that kind of hydration process versus gravel, I think, I think it, may, it's, it makes the most sense to have it only in specific areas. Um, I think it's destructive to the overall historic nature of the town. And that, that means it could, it could disturb um, ancient sites it could disturb um, waterways and the way the water runs, the way the trees hold the water back. I think it's a whole, a whole host of things that we really don't understand, and I think we have to proceed very carefully. And presenting something like this that, granted, can change, I think is only being good guardians um, of our environment. Okay. Are we ready for a vote? So the chair, oh, no. I've been addressed twice, and I would like to respond to both. Not to have the back and forth, but there's been some misconceptions thrown about with my name associated with them. First of all, we have a very good law covering solar power in our town that we worked with uh, subcommittees and this planning board to construct. Um, and it's in place, and it's doing what it needs to do with protecting the interests of the town, interest of nature and environmental issues that we that we are looking forward and looking out for setbacks uh how we how we deal with solar farms and it's all there and it's very it's doing what it needs to do <coughs> secondly um there is a science and it is solid and every day that the sun shines my solar panels were on my roof but they're offsetting 
pounds and pounds and pounds of carbon every day. And that's what solar farms do. It's not, this is a scientific fact. Um, and no, this is a board, oh. this is a board that's had legal issues concerning this type of topic. So I'm not surprised with some of the feedback, but I would urge this board to be cautious about making a rule that's too strict for personal reasons. Um, okay, so uh, this conversation is going to be rich and vibrant for sure, um, which I celebrate, right? I, I appreciate the opportunity to have the conversation, to be honest, because um, I have personally struggled in the, in, in the permitting process so far. Um, so all those in favor of uh, putting this article on the town meeting warrant as a placeholder signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. And abstentions? Okay. Thank you. All right. So the next thing I think is the sidewalk survey. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, I took a peek at it. Do you want to say anything about it, John? I'm going to defer to Gary on this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so a couple of quick things. Um, one, um, what you have in front of you is the updated um, draft survey with with comments, and I could just talk through um, really two minor changes. Um, one was the addition of um, an intent question per um, some of Rob's comments, mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, I, I just. Uh, um, Sorry. It's in the, the, the It's in the yeah, I did look at it. Yeah. The link, the minimum the link as well. Oh. Uh, and then secondly I just reordered it's a few down. things to, to make it go. flow a little bit better. Um, I did have one question for John. Do, have you heard anything through the town if they're planning on submitting any requests um, at town meeting for I heard sidewalks? Anything. No, I haven't heard anything. I can I can ask DPW but I'm and, and the only reason I ask is that I I'm, I worry a little bit that we're potentially too late to have much influence here, given when the town, and, and I, I don't know if that's true, is I don't know if. I can relate to that, though. It feels that it may, not, it may not be true, but it feels it. We've had so many special town meetings this past year. So, um, and I, hmm. you know, I, I, I guess if, if if the DPW or the town is already planning on... So I guess the, the clarification to that question is that DPW has asked me to reach out to you guys to see if there's any priority for sidewalks moving forward because they've gotten struck down at town meetings so often that they think there's okay. a need for an update. So, so this is yeah, kind of this is kind of started by DPW. Will they put a placeholder on? I'm not putting a placeholder here. Hold on. Yeah, so, so would they consider a, a placeholder for sidewalks? I'd have to talk to them. I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay. See one. They're asking for a few other things. Uh, the I doubt they've got one already because they've asked us to do a survey. So I, I doubt they're okay. they're thinking I, that far ahead. I think there's value in doing a survey even if the result isn't until next year. I, yeah. Th that's a fair point. Yeah. So we continue forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at least ask them if they want to put a placeholder on, if we're getting where we're positioned to. If we could, I think that would be favorable because I think the reality is, is that for a survey like this, we'd want this to be open for, um, I would say, a month would be yep. sufficient. Yep. Um, so we could have that data back and have some input um, for discussion yep. um, still well in advance. Right. And we do know that you know most recent feedback data is the most important to have, right? So it, that's yep. the voters of today doing this survey. So if there is a placeholder, it's likelier to speak to what people who are voting today want. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Um, you know, I, I, I think just from uh, how do we administer the survey, and I, I think it's safe to say that we do need both um, digital and paper copies. Um, hopefully the majority of respondents would be able to do so via digital format. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and I, I'm curious for if there's anybody that's done surveys through the town before, um, like what um, web-based, uh, we use Google Forms. Google Forms. Okay. But so so my recommendation was um, 
you know, so then it would be through Google Forms. Um, I think we can post it on the town website. Um, we, I'm assuming we'll be able to send out links to it that we could um, in turn put on um, Hop News, on eHop, um, on you know, Facebook groups that people wanted to. And then for the paper copies, um, I don't know if people have thoughts. Library. I mean, what's that? Library. Yeah, the library at Town Hall, Senior Center. Um, just a quick question. I think that's a great idea with the paper copies, but I don't. Did we do it last time with paper or just electronic? I don't know. For, I might have we did an historic district survey and we had a box at Town Hall in the library. I was thinking of the sidewalk survey that yeah. we did like four years ago. Yeah, I don't know about that. It doesn't matter. I think it's a good idea. Um, and then my, my last question, um, just not sure if this is a concern at all, but um, you know, do we want to try to attempt to control for you know, one survey per person or one survey per household or something like that? And I don't know if there's a way to really enforce that. Um, I don't sense that there's enough personal investment in this type of a conversation. I like the fact that you have it on a one page. It's simple, it's clear, it's concise. I think it gets the job done. Collect a phone number for every entry, and then match the phone numbers at the end. But they, I think the, the results the for the last time kept track of the person you put in their, your address. It might be something good in a box um, at town meeting on the EHOP on the EHOP um, table or on a general table that has um, some of the information for the town meeting to have you know a, a survey because they're like they're most likely the people that are going to be sitting there during the meeting and have time to think about it a little bit so so maybe that's a really good place to to really put it out there it wouldn't necessarily inform town meeting though in that case but no what you're doing right yeah. well, to your question I do think we should enforce it if if we had to you know what I mean if, because, I mean, like, somebody could put in 10 entries for the same one. Right? Oh, look, we need a sidewalk. Somebody there. wants a sidewalk on their street. They go, right. yeah. you know, click repeat. I mean, you want the times. survey to be authentic, right? So yeah. somebody might ask. Yeah, well, I don't know. Does oh. Google Forms control for it at all? I have no idea. I think they can control for emails. But, I mean, I just, I don't know how accurate that restriction is going to be. Because you could, I mean, even in person, somebody could just make up an address. Yeah. Or right. just go down the road, and then, and then if they make up it's ten addresses on their own street, how does the one person who actually lives at one of those addresses? How do we identify which one's the correct one? I don't so, think this is such a high stakes. Yeah. I, yeah, we need to wait too much. I, I was just thinking about not actually doing the audit, but have the capability of doing it if necessary. You know. Yeah. I, I, Electronically, we can restrict to. I think we can restrict to one entry per email address. Okay. That doesn't stop somebody from entering. But we're not actually sending it out by. Email. I think yeah. when you log in to fill it out, you can collect email addresses. No, he means that there's going to be a paper copy as well. That would be right. a problem. You can't. I mean, it's going to be difficult to do both. Well, on a paper, you can say it's um, email required, but if somebody doesn't fill it out, they don't fill it out. So for Historic District, we did our survey both paper, we mailed it out, and we did it online. And I collected them, and I would enter them into the Google form when I got home because we hardly got any paper yeah. forms. I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. But I just entered them in, and I wrote at the bottom, manually entered by Amy or something. So that we know that that was a paper form, but it wasn't scientific, but it gave us a, still a good sense, I think. I think people are mostly going to appreciate the opportunity to weigh in uh, if if sidewalks are an issue for them. And I just don't. I, I guess I just don't see this as being. Um, yeah, I I don't think I would put the effort into that, but I'm willing to be dissuaded. So just one last question, and I I I, I hope you're right. And at the end of the day, this is only a. A survey. So, yeah. um, if, it, if it, the, the, the results come back and it's overwhelmingly, then then we have the opportunity to probe and learn a little Not bit more. Not only that, you know, town meeting will will control for it too. Um, I'm just wondering. So, if we talked about having them have requiring an email, I'm wondering if we're actually better off just having them list an address for where they live. And the reason I say this is because that that actually could give us some other interesting data to see what parts of town are. At least most involved, and I think that was one of the challenges with the survey from four years ago. It sort of felt like maybe there were a few neighborhoods that were really pushing for something in particular on in their their part of town. So this That's just not might not a bad idea. Put a line in there asking them where they live. You can make that a yeah. required field to address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of instead of the email, which people may get sensitive about and they don't want someone reaching out to them, just have them mm -hmm. list their address. Mm -hmm. Devil's advocate. 
do would we want to do the street that they live on rather than their address because people might not want to fill it out if they're filling out their actual address sure, sure. Yeah. it's fine and i think i would still request email is it an optional field because then it's you nice can email them the results when it's done uh, okay that. social security number would be good too <laughs> <laughs> date of birth credit card everything <laughs> like the whole go thing. for it license right, number yeah, just <laughs> so <laughs> so john i'll, I'll just make those last changes with the the, the, the street um, and the optional email there's a few notes we don't need to discuss them um, <laughs> just just a little bit all right yeah. so we're generally good we don't need to vote for that right no. we're just gonna do it okay no good so I know Jane I've seen you three times you know, when it's your turn you know what the the opportunity to be chair is coming up it's your lucky no, day no, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just I'm just going out there me and sitting out there I know I know me too come on forward <laughs> hi how are you tonight Good. Uh, I'm Mahesh from 16 Redwood I just want to see. Uh, like to know on the legacy farms not bus issue uh, last time we discussed, like we, we, we everybody echoed that look, like, we need to have a certain plan for the annual town meeting. Yeah. I don't know how it, how far we went through. I sent out an email last week to you, to the chair. Yeah. Actually. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's definitely in front of all of us for sure. And I have a note on the top of my page to I have a placeholder for it um, as well. So we're tracking that and we're going to formally track that. Okay. So we need to vote to submit it as a placeholder, right? Yeah, w which is fine. Okay. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, um, but the we we also need to make sure that we are coordinating with the the select board too, so that their process is going forward. So we need to figure out a process um, to track that whole effort. Actually, um, I, I, I went to select board meeting last week, and they said it's, it's planning board is going to propose the water. Okay, so yeah. we're we're totally happy to hold on to it in that case for sure. We just want to make sure that we're you know that's. Not further stepping on toes. And the assistant <laughs> town managers are like, they cannot start weighing on it un until Roy submits the plan. So we don't know where exactly Roy is. Uh, so we're, yeah, we have to, I have to ask about that. I don't know if he's submitted any different plans. Or in no, the so I reached out to him five days ago. I'm looking at the email right now, and I, I asked him where the plan was, and he said he's going to talk to VHB and get me an update. I haven't heard anything since. Okay. And I told him the timeline and when it needs to be before the planning board. So he's aware that the 27th is the last day that it could be before the planning board. So we can have a placeholder article. Uh, that's uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I definitely think that. Well, we're, I think we should vote to put a placeholder article on. Right now. Yeah, right now. Do we have any other street acceptances this year? We usually have a few. I'd have to check. I don't know. I don't What's the question? Do, do we have it? other street acceptances this year? I haven't heard. That is a good question. Have a handful. Um, I'll have to check. I, I haven't heard of any. So, but I, so I would entertain a motion to add a placeholder article for the acceptance of the Legacy Farms North Road, so we don't lose track of that. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, any discussion? What does that mean if there's other roads that need require acceptance? Would it all be? In they have to have uh, that. That article would have to be. I, I don't think so. I think that sometimes they're they're together. I think that I would at least. I mean, I'm open to an argument, but or a discussion. But um, in this case, I might keep Legacy Farms North separate if we had other street acceptances as well, because it's unique. Um, but um, but if we have them, it, it, they need an article for town meeting too. Who usually brings those forward? Is it developers or? The street acceptance? Yeah. I believe it's planning board. Planning board. So we don't have any, we're going to check and see if we have any. I'm trying to think of which ones would be if roads, except in the roads. Yeah. They aren't always, they, I mean, there, there aren't always roads. The big one is Legacy Farms North, isn't it? Well, it's definitely. From a con contractor or construction company that's near completion or something? Yeah. yeah. Usually, actually, the contractor is pushing for them because they get their they bond, get their bond back. back. Yeah. Yeah, like last year we did Hunters Ridge and Penny Meadow Lane. Yeah. Those are so I think the, the typical process, I think, is usually it's, got, it's developer driven to us, but we put it on the town meeting warrant. But I mean, the only ones that uh, Chamberlain Whalen, but that they're not complete. Long way and away. Whisper Way isn't complete. Long way away. I'm trying to think, I can't yeah. think of any yeah. others. Some yeah. of these are very old roads. Penny Meadow Lane was in, I think, really rough shape, and the neighbors yeah. wanted it to get separate <clears> so it could get repaired. Mm -hmm. um, 
just thinking of the new road over, or well, the new old road over in Highland Park off of Greenwood. Stony, Ro Stony Brook. Is it they're, still building, they're, they're still building there, yeah. yeah. That's the only yeah. one I can think of that would be. It's coming and then, the and then one off of um, the road that goes around the lake up in the Over park. off of um, Pond Street? Yeah. With the one up oh, yeah, yeah, there. yeah. It's just a cul de sac. Oh, Fox Ridge. Fox, Fox, Fox Ridge. Fox Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. I'll check. I, I don't, I haven't heard of any. So, okay. excellent question, though, because. Uh, sure, just leave out one. Yes. Yep. So, is um, all those in favor of the article for the Legacy Farms North Road signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So um, I have some free time this week coming up. I'll, I'll go in. I'll take the action item to go into town hall and work, sit with John and make sure we have a structured um, timeline and map um, and, and uh, we follow it. But I know John, it's in front of John um, as well. But we're very committed to making this happen if it's possible. Sure. All right. So, Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Chair, that would, so that, can that be a line item for our next meeting and maybe just... Yeah, is, I, I think please we, look at the number that we get for the yes, article. Yes, yeah, and I also think that we need, a, I mean, we need the plan, right? That, yeah. We need the plan. So, we yeah, reach we get out the article number, then we can fill in whatever we want, right? Right, but I, but it, I think it helps us if oh, we yeah, get, sure, yeah, sure. if we get that ahead of the deadline for sure. Would it be possible to get an update from the school committee too to see where they are with a bus monitor down in that um, intersection? Yeah, uh, 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 we will definitely reach out. I, I don't know whether everybody aware of that. This, this last week there was an incident happened in the bus, like the driver came out of the seat and then it's trying to arrange. I'm sorry, say it again. L last week the driver came out of the seat and trying to arrange the kids and then the bus went backwards because he didn't press the brakes properly. Oh dear. So it was, again, one of our jumped into the bus and then pressed the brakes because he, he was in the back. So. So I think they're trying to get a crossing wow. garden. Well, a that crossing won't, garden that won't that happen in that case. Yeah, so that would, <laughs> so they went, you went to the school committee, correct? Well, I, I did talk to Mina. a crossing guard. Okay. And they have not got back to so you. Yeah, they said like this so maybe it would be not. good to get an update from the school committee. They're so trying to get a crossing guard in front of the school, high school. Too. Yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily know I that they're short on people. They can't hire anyone. Yeah. But, but that's a whole different I don't think the bus driver is supposed to leave their seats, right? I think maybe not, yeah. Yeah, uh, and again, later we complain and the, and the driver was taken and taken for uh, another training course or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, okay. Everybody okay? Yeah, everybody fine. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Sounds good. Training course and setting the parking brake. Yeah. Um, okay, but we, this board is committed to this. We have pressed hard for this and we're, we're all in. Um, and, I, and I think um, it was clear that the voters at town meeting are all in as well. So um, really it, the action item is to keep the pressure on the developer to do his piece um, and go from there. Right. And the reason I brought up this incident is because phase three got started, like people started coming. So the kids now got 40, 50 and the driver is kind of trying to arrange the kids. It's not that like he intentionally wants to, but the kids, a lot of kids are and the count is increasing, so that's the Yeah, of course. No, of course. We're, we're, all of us here, are, um, I think, all of us here are parents, and we're all thinking about it in terms of uh, uh, the safety of, of the kids, um, and we're very committed. And I was really, really gratified at town meeting, to be honest with you, um, that uh, town meeting is very committed to the idea, too. We're going to find a way to, sure. to figure this out. Thank you. Thank or you. I'm going to get out my lawn chair and I'm going to be sitting out there <laughs> stopping <the> traffic. <laughs> I threatened that a year ago. Don't think I won't do it. But we're, we're with you, okay? Sure. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Thank you for the time. Thanks, you. Yeah. All right. Minutes. 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 How about uh, voting to release the minutes of the executive session? And I don't have the date in front of me. I'm sorry. I keep January 14th. Using. January 14th. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then we have December, I'm sorry, November 25th. I'm doing it from memory here. November 25th. <laughs> Look at me go. I didn't bring it back. Um, November 25th. Um, I had on page three, I had a couple comments. Um, one of the, it, uh, Gary's comments said uh, to follow the four trees, and I think it was to allow the four trees to be removed. 
I think it's just a, I think it's a typo or something. It's just a word. Yeah. It's autocorrect. I'm, I'm guessing it's allow. It's under the no cut he's meant for cobbler's way. Yes. Yeah. So one is allow. One is basically allow. Allow. What line is it? It's <laughs> two thirds <laughs> of the way down. Mr. Trundle proposes to follow the fourth Seventh line, line up from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. And then the only other comment I had was under the Main Street Quarter Project. And I don't mean to go back and correct it now, but um, there were many questions to which there were ans that were answered. Um, I think that's a little less detail than we would typically okay. want going forward. So that w those are my two comments on that. But I think that it is definitely, it's a, it's a fait accompli, it's a done deal, it's not worth the exercise to go back. It's not necessarily a project that was as completely in front of us, but just taking a note for the next it would time. Be on video if anyone yes, to that's right, it's on video if it was necessary, exactly. Um, so those are, anybody else have any comments? Okay, so um, did somebody move the minutes of the 25th? No, not Would somebody move the minutes so of the 25th? Um, with that one small correction, allow. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> okay, and then December 9th. I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes from December 9th. So moved. Is there a second? Any, any discussion on those, those minutes? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. I'm abstaining just because I wasn't there and there is no recording. Okay. But you can always <laughs> count on your teammates. I'm just saying if you wanted to. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I don't even know how many people were actually there. Does it say in the five? Five. Um, it would six. have to say in the five, right? Radio yeah. Six. Oh, that crazy, crazy night. What if they they I was busy don't get handing out flyers. What if they don't get approved? Ultimately, they have to get approved. That's state law. So, really, <laughs> you know. Really <laughs> we have to really so, so, yeah. So, we have, yeah. So we have to do something. So we have to figure it out. There would have to be a reason why they weren't approved. Yeah. And it, yeah. There'd have to be a reason why they weren't approved. And if, if somebody had an issue with them, they weren't accurately well, you have a majority, so that would, that would yeah. be corrected yeah. before. But any member of, public, of the public could request draft minutes at any time if we don't have them approved yet. So, right. so is there a motion to adjourn so we can go home and watch a football game? Is there a football game? College right? finals. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, hold on. Do we have any anything we have to think about for the 27th? Um, we have a relatively full agenda. So we have Maspinock Woods. Yep. We've got the application today. Oh. Not the application, the, the okay. additional files. Um, Lumber Street Tennis Club. Uh, Buckland Leonard is likely going to be continued. Okay. He has revised his plan and he's going before CONCOM, potentially for three houses. Okay. And potentially with access off of Leonard Street. Okay. smile. That's based on uh, a discussion with CONCOM on the okay. 21st. Okay. So even if even if they We're like his over. plan at the 21st, <coughs> he's still going to probably continue just to get everything okay. put together. And then um, the uh, uh, solar, Franklin. And then, yeah, Franklin Solar. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm just asking if, um, do you think that we need to build in any, oh, we should. Yeah. We have two, two more articles for, for Zach. Zach. Certainly, the, those have to go on there. But do we need extra time, do you think? Or we're in good shape there. Um, and then um, I know it's always on the agenda, but we should definitely have uh, an explicit status on the Legacy Farms North timeline. Um, and is there anything we have to do before we want closes? Right, right, right. Uh, maybe, maybe get um, clarity on whether or not the plans um, are a problem if they're not in by the 27th for us. My memory is that they can be submitted very close to town meeting as long as the... They have to be to the, the select board, I think. In a, it, there's that, I remember that. There's a fixed timeline that the select board has to look at them, right? They, they could be submitted closer to town meeting to I select so. board, but I don't think it would be... We have to have a hearing. We definitely have to have a public hearing. So the problem is if they submit it to... This is what we came up against in the special town meeting. If they submit yeah. them to select board, they refer them back to the planning board, and then there's a certain amount of time that the planning board has to meet on them. Yes. And that, that How much time, time does the planning board have to meet? Off the top of my head, I don't okay. remember. So that's, we should have, I want to have that mapped out in front of us for the 27th so that we all know what the, the hard time drivers are. Okay. 
I'll entertain a motion to adjourn are so we, we can all go home and enjoy. What? Oh, are go we ahead. starting at 7 or 7.30 on the 27th? Do we need to start earlier? I think I think not. Just, just clarifying because you were saying there's a lot. Yeah, I would say 7.30, yes. Okay. I was kind have, of, we, have we already, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Have we already planned um, which date is going to be the public hearing on the Zach articles? I guess we'll have to publish it, that in the We've not two decided that, no. okay. I don't think we have to, though, right? At this point, but if we have it by then, <coughs> we can like, certainly start to talk until then. Yeah, it's usually in February. I don't know if there's a requirement for it to be in February. All right. So we'll so we we'll have we'll, we should have a date if we can. Okay. 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 That's that seems fair. Just so the public can see. Around Valentine's Day will be a really sweet date. <laughs> 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 Here we I go. To adjourn. Yes. No extra charge for the Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye.